We're going to move over to D2 football. We've got updated regional rankings for the D2 football playoff. And, guys, this is where it gets really interesting. All right. Super region number one. A lot of this maybe has not changed as much as, uh, you know, some of the other super regions. Charleston, Kutztown, still on top. And, and this super region may as well be called the, the PSAC Invitational because you got Kutztown, Cal PA, Slippery Rock, East Stroudsburg all in the mix right there. Uh, all top six teams in the region, so all guaranteed a spot in the playoff. Now, New Haven in at that number seven spot. Ashland does drop out after a tough loss to Walsh this week, so a little bit of a shakeup there. Finley... Coming in at number five, they've got a big-time matchup against Tiffin this coming weekend, so we'll see how that determines, you know, the result of that could have some consequences potentially here. You've got Assumption and Bentley, a couple of any 10 teams, excuse me, on the outside looking in. And in this case, we were talking about New Haven last week and, and, and the Super Region rankings, and I think it was worth noting, I talked about the earned access, the quote-unquote earned access rule that's being implemented in Division Two when it comes to playoff seating. And I didn't have a great understanding of what that was last week. I did a little bit of research, and... Earned access means that if a conference is not represented in the super region, that if that team is in the top nine as opposed to the top seven, they would take the seventh seed's spot. So if as we go down the list, we I think there's a there's an example of this um, as we continue to to go down. It wouldn't be there, but I believe Super Region 3, we're going to bounce back and forth a little bit. I apologize. But in Super Region 3, for example, you have UND as the lone GLVC representative in this list. And right now they're slated at number 7. So that would mean that they're automatically into the playoffs because the top 7 from each region get in. But say UND has a loss or UCM or Saginaw pick up a, a Fort Hayes, pick up a big win and somehow leapfrog them. If UND was in that 8 or 9 slot and Fort Hayes was at 7, the Greyhounds from UND would actually jump up and take that spot because of this earned access rule. Now, how do you feel about it? Eh. Eh. I don't know. I think if if your conference is not represented, that means it's not a great conference. Not to say that UND is a bad football team, because they are not. But UND lost to the number 10 team on this list in Saginaw Valley which makes me think they would not compete very well at the top at least three to four or five on this list. So, I don't know. Take that rule as you may, but that's what that earned access rule is about. But let's talk about Super Region number three. It's number two, excuse me. Hello. Valdosta State, a top Super Region number two now. Wingate now with the one loss in the year, and I think the, the most exciting part of this is that Wingate and Carson Newman are set to meet in a crash course collision with Carson Newman this weekend for the SAC Championship. That's going to be an interesting one. You got West Alabama in there at the three spot. Lenore Ryan is back up to number five, and then you've got some good representation here from Miles and Johnson C. Smith. The CIAA has been one that's um, been much more represented in kind of these regional rankings in the past couple of years. Johnson C. Smith was 8-0. and oh. They've dropped two games in a row. First one was the Fayetteville State, they got shut out this last week. Livingstone knocks off the Golden Bulls. We'll talk about it later. But even with those two losses, their in-region record is strong. And when I, uh, you know, go over, there's some other metrics that they do use as far as uh, their criteria in terms of, you know, what's your record uh, against teams that are over 500? What, what is this KPI index, the Kevin Pauga index? I do believe it stands for. I don't have all that pulled up in front of me right now. But they have a resume still at 8-2 and two that apparently is good enough. The committee deems that they would be in at the 7 spot. Now, you got a West Florida team at number 8 that plays Valdosta State this weekend. So a win for the Argonauts on Saturday could shake up a lot for those bottom 5, 6, and 7 spots. If this Argo team gets hot and gets a win there, they could certainly be a play-in type of game for that team down in Pensacola. So uh, you do have Virginia Union, Winston-Salem State kind of on the outside looking in there at 9 and 10. Johnson C. Smith, I do believe, has the head-to-head -head as far as they beat both of them during the regular season. So I don't see that becoming much of an issue. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of things could shake out here. Again, that Wingate-Carson-Newman game, I wouldn't imagine that the loser of that gets bounced from this pool. I've seen crazier. I absolutely have. Let's go on to Super Region number three. Ferris State still on top. The Bulldogs followed closely by GVSU and Pittsburgh State, who did hand the Bulldogs their only loss of the year back in Week 0. More MIAA representation in Central Oklahoma. Then we go down to the two top foes from the GAC. Watchdog Baptist followed closely by Harding. And you got UND there at number seven with some Fort Hayes, Central Missouri, and Saginaw Valley right now being the first three out. So, what stands to shake up here? Well, that Ferris State-Grand Valley game already happened. You've got 
a Pittsburgh State team that did not play this last week was dormant. A Ouachita Baptist team that is going to play in the Battle of the Ravine this week with the Henderson State squad that is very hungry for a big-time win. So that certainly could shake things up and knock the Tigers out if somehow they were able to lose that, which Henderson took it last year. So it's not outside of the realm of possibility. We've seen them slip up against Southern Nazarene. So um, this Ouachita Baptist team I'm certain will show up, and it'll be a very competitive game. But if they are to lose that, you could be bounced out of that five spot very quickly. There's some talented teams there at 8, 9, and 10 that would love to take that place. Now... Other than that, I don't see a whole lot of mix-ups here in, in Super Region number three, and I guess we'll have to see how that uh, you know continues to evolve. But finally, Super Region number four, Pueblo, the top dog, and certainly they've played like it. They dominated against Mines this last week, and we'll talk about that here in a bit. Augustana coming in at number two, followed by Mankato, and then Angelo State, who just clinched the Lone Star Championship. They have not lost to a team in region. As you see the record there, both their losses coming to MIAA teams in the first two weeks of the season. Western Colorado, Central Washington, and Bemidji round out those final three. Sioux Falls still at number eight with three losses. I mean, you look at this last loss, a very competitive one to Augustana and their key to the city game. They're on the outside looking in. Colorado Mesa right there. And School of Mines still kind of an afterthought, but admittedly still there at number 10, the Ore Diggers hanging around, but that, that game against Pueblo was really their only chance, I do believe, to, to get back into this thing. So we'll see how it all shakes out. Again, that earned access rule is something that's very interesting at the D2 level. I'm curious to see if that, after this weekend slate of games, if that has any kind of big-time implications because I can only imagine the frustrations from a team that feels like they've rightfully earned their spot into the playoffs only to be bounced because someone else's conference is not currently represented in the pool of seven in that super region. So... Man, that would be outrageous, and I honestly don't know if I could blame said coach, players, admin, whoever um, of that team if they were, like, incredibly disgruntled. Mm-hmm.